All right. So welcome everybody to Career Services First Snack and Chat. As I all just said to you, I'll repeat it again, but our um, employer today is Shannon from Monroe to Orleans BOCES. So everyone say hi to Shannon. Yay. Um, so everyone start off with our first question. Can you tell us about yourself and how you came to work for Monroe to Orleans BOCES? Sure. So I started out as a special education teacher um, first, and then through that work, I moved into doing some work in the administration realm, and that led me to pursuing my educational leadership degree, uh, which I did get from SUNY Brockport. And then following that, I had um, about three years of experience working in the Rochester City School District as a school administrator, overseeing an academic and vocational program for students with disabilities. And then that led me to the opportunity at BOCES II um, to work with our transition program and a part of that was um, a, an HR role. And HR, for me, has grown immensely. And so um, that has been my primary focus for the past few years. Awesome. All right, so can you tell us a little more about what's it like to work for BOCES? Sure. So um, especially given kind of all that we're going through right now, um, BOCES to through this experience is demonstrating, um, as is always our focus, that students are first. Um, our primary goal and focus is always putting students first and meeting their needs. Working um, at BOCES too, you encounter a lot of different types of students. Um, students ages three through 21, all which have a variety of different abilities. Um, and so we work to meet those abilities in the best way possible. And that can look very different for different students, um, but it's about meeting a student where he or she is at and providing the supports for that student to be su as successful as possible. Awesome. All right, next question. What is your favorite part of working there? Um, I think my favorite part is just that, that we're student focused and that we are, truly meeting the needs of the students um, in the best way that we can. And if we don't have something, um, it doesn't stop us from, from creating something new for a student that we may not have done previously, or even a whole program for a group of students that we maybe didn't serve prior, but um, the need has arisen. So we work to meet um, the, the students' needs. Great. All right, what is the most important thing you've learned while working there? Um, I would say, well, so focusing on my HR role, that the most important thing for me is finding individuals that genuinely want to work with our students. Our students can be quite challenging. Uh, we have a wide variety of needs and um, some of those students can, you know, can challenge those that work with them. And so finding individuals that truly want to be there for the right reasons and want to support students knowing that they're going to be challenging and you know some days you might go home and you might be like wow that was a tough day um you know how am i going to do this again next day but but reminding yourself that they're there for a reason and our job is to support them and you know maybe you tried one strategy and that was unsuccessful but going back the next day with a fresh perspective and trying a different strategy um in order to try to meet those student needs great all right, what advice would you give to someone who's looking to apply to work there? Uh, so all of our uh, postings and information is on our website. And um, so I think reviewing that website and kind of coming to know what BOCES 2 is and what we're all about um, to see if that, um, if our organization meets kind of your personality and what you're looking to get out of um, a job or a career um, you know, some people start out in this and it's a stepping stone for them. Others make a career out of working at BOCES. Um, so it all depends on what you're looking for for yourself, but coming to know, um, you know, our organization and what we stand for, our mission and vision. Um, and if you feel that those um, things meet what you're looking for, all of our postings are online. And so you would go through that um, online application process. All right. So we kind of touched on this a little bit. You've said a couple different qualities, but how would you describe the perfect person to work for Monroe to Orleans BOCES? 
So I think um, two words that stand out to me um, are flexible and adaptable. Um, we are an itinerant organization, which means that all of our staff or many of our staff are on the move on a daily basis. Um, we work with nine different school districts that we're partners with. So we work with seven on um, the western side of Monroe County and two in Eastern Orleans County. And um, our classrooms are spread throughout those districts that we're partners with. So, and then we have a couple of center-based programs also immersed within those um, district areas. So having the willingness to kind of be on the move and go where the needs are is important. Um, and when you're in your role, if you're in a, um, a classroom role on a day-to-day -day basis, you may not be physically moving as much, but you might be having to move and um, switch up what you're doing with a student because it, one strategy that you're using might you might not find success with. So kind of you know being flexible and adaptable to try something new if if one thing that you're doing isn't working. Um, so those you know when I meet with individuals and I'm interviewing people, those are qualities that I really look for um, and. And the recognition, and that's why I recommend, you know, kind of learning about BOCES through the website and through asking people questions, um, which is kind of why we're doing this today. Um, because that type of setting may not be what you're looking for. Um, you know, you have your traditional school district settings where you, you know, if you're a school psychologist, as an example, you might be housed in one elementary school supporting all of those students in that one building. Um, for us, you're potentially working as a school psychologist and you're moving between three different school districts. Um, so that might be what you're looking for and it might not be what you're looking for. So knowing that about yourself is also important because if we're not the organization that you're interested in, we wouldn't want you to pursue something that, you know, knowing how we're organized and set up is important because it could work for you it could not work for you and that's okay it's a it's good to know that about yourself definitely all right our next question what do you wish someone had told you before you started this career um well i can tell you that i never ever saw myself in hr <laughs> um when i went to school for administration i thought that i you know you would have you know, your, the more traditional roles of assistant principal or principal or a building leader are what um, are what came to mind for me. But I think, you know, don't sell yourself short and keep keep an open mind um, because you never know what opportunities could come your way. Wonderful advice. Um, a harder one, maybe not for you, but maybe for our students to hear. What are some negative traits that you often see in our our recent college graduates? Um, I think maybe rigidity, um, with regards to what I said, regard needing to be flexible and adaptable. Some people, and, and it's, you know, it's good to know that about yourself, but it, then it may not be that you're a good fit for us at BOCES, um, because we do look for those that are more adaptable and flexible. And through the interview process, sometimes you learn about a person's rigidity and their unwillingness to perform certain tasks that might be required um, within our positions. Um, and so if we see those, that type of um, trait coming through in our interviews, we're going to, you know, that's kind of a red flag for us mm -hmm. because, we, you know, we are looking for those individuals that have um, more flexible personalities and more, you know, more flexibility, willingness to be more flexible. Definitely good to know. Um, what would surprise people about your daily work? Um, prop, there probably are a lot of things that I do that you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't think fall under the realm of HR. Um, so one of um, my large tasks day to day is the management of substitutes. Mm -hmm. So we have um, about, about 65 or so classrooms that we run. And so I have to uh, provide substitutes for all of those classrooms, both teachers, um, paraprofessionals, support staff, 
Um, and that, that can be a pretty challenging task because, um, you know, especially in probably the past few years, um, there are not enough substitutes to go around. So mm -hmm. often, um, you know, people are like, man, Shannon didn't do anything today. Shannon didn't get us a sub. But it's certainly not that. It's just, you know, you're prioritizing and you're getting staff um, to the classrooms that most need it. And, um, you know, and sometimes that feels like you're not meeting everybody's needs and there may not be enough people to go around. All right, that just made me think of a question. This one's not on the paper that I sent you, so here's another question. Do you okay. think that applying to be a substitute is a good way to get your foot in the door and kind of experience working there? 100%. Um, so there are often, you know, there are, uh, when I'm interviewing somebody, if a person is unsure or when I come, when I go to job fairs and that sort of thing, um, talking about substituting opportunities kind of open up eyes for some people. And it's not an experience that everybody has had uh, working in a classroom setting, especially with students with disabilities. Um, and our disabilities um, that our students have can be pretty challenging. They're at BOCES for a reason. Um, so if you're unsure of the kind of work that we do specifically, a great way to experience it is through being a substitute so that you can pick and choose where you want to go um, and you get to pick and choose the experiences that you have. Obviously, going back to that word flexible, the more flexible you are, the more opportunities you will get to sub and the more knowledge and experience you will gain. Um, and then the hope is that through that experience that you gain, um, you'll come to grow and love special education and being in that world, or you might find out that it's not some place that you wanna be long-term, which is totally okay. Um, because we would prefer that we have individuals working for us that want to be working with our students. So kind of going along with that, um, you've talked about adaptability. So in addition to that, what is something that a person can do to set them apart from other candidates? Um, you know, probably, I mean, the thing that I'm looking for initially, and obviously a person grows and changes over the course of being in a position with us, but probably, you know, the, the primary thing that I'm looking for is a person that wants to be there, that shows motivation and willingness to grow and learn um, through their experiences with us at BOCES too, um, and that demonstrates that they're, they're open-minded and willing to do whatever is needed. Um, each of our classrooms looks very different. We have preschoolers and then we have 21-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So you have to um, have a willingness to kind of work with any age, in between that that range um, and and you know demonstrate flexibility through through that work so you know if if, you, if those are qualities that, and and it doesn't mean that you're 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 going to come out from an interview and you know demonstrate those things perfectly but the willingness to grow and learn in a position is is important all right last question of this topic section what types of positions are typically hired by your company or like what are you currently hiring for? Mm -hmm. So all positions related to education. So we have special education teachers. We have many support services, which include um, school social workers, school psychologists, uh, many different therapists, occupational therapists, physical therapists, um, music therapists, art therapists. Um, and we have our paraprofessional positions, which um, are teacher aides and student behavioral assistants. Those positions are often um, looked at as entry-level positions. And if you're going to school you know, to be a teacher or to be a therapist of some sort, those are nice opportunities, especially while you're in school, you could substitute uh, while you're taking your coursework to gain that experience and, and gain experience with special education students. So just as an example, um, an occupational therapist, you can work in a school setting or you can work in a community setting. So by working as a paraprofessional, that experience can help you to determine whether you're looking for a career as an occupational therapist in a school setting, or if you're more interested in kind of that community setting, uh, maybe working at a nursing home or, or that sort of thing. All right. So that's the end of our BOCES related questions. If anyone has any more questions directly about that, we can pop in those questions at the end of the session here. 
going to move on to our career topic now. So we've got a couple resume questions. I'm going to start with what I've written down and then we'll move over to the student questions. So the first one is, what do you think the main purpose of a resume is? Um, in, in just a few words, to sell yourself. So we have many um, applications that we get every single day. Um, and that's our first glimpse into you and what you um, bring to a position or potentially bring to a position. Um, so it's an opportunity to kind of showcase what you uh, what skills you have and what experience you have and what education you have because um, that's going to that screening of that resume is going to get you to that next step. Great, thank you. Um, our next question, when applying for a position, do you think it's better to list general skills or position specific skills, a little bit of both? I think I think a combination because um, I think there are interpersonal and soft skills that are general that any position would be looking for. Um, and also tailoring what skills you can bring to the specific job is beneficial too. So as a paraprofessional, I'm going to be looking for um, people that have, if, if you have experience, I, I would be looking to see that experience on a resume. Um, but if you don't bring that experience just yet, um, demonstrating through the general skills that you share that ability and willingness to learn and grow. Great. All right. Is there a section that you look for first when you're reviewing a resume? Um, so it depends on the position, um, but I'm going to look because our positions are pretty specialized in the way of the college um, or degree or certification or licensing that is needed. I'm going to look to those um, credentials first so I can see if a person actually qualifies for the position that they've applied to um, and then I'm going to look to that experience next and um, for us we we um, we appreciate a person that comes with experience but we certainly know that everybody has to start somewhere so by you not having that experience um, doesn't mean that you're going to be you know disqualified from consideration for a position Definitely. I know I love those applications that are like, we need two years of experience. And it's like, well, I graduated. Yeah. <laughs> to know that you're still looking at candidates, even if they don't have that ton of experience yet. Yeah. Um, and that, that's where it goes back to, you know, if you're willing to take the time during, you know, your college career to pursue something that's, you know, a part-time job or a substituting job where you're gaining some of that kid experience, it might not be exactly in um, the field that you're going to be pursuing your career in. But if you could say that you have experience with kids, um, you know, that's going to set you apart from others. Definitely. Um, all right. What is a common mistake you say? Um, so probably grammar errors, um, you know, double and triple check resumes for um, spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes. Um, I can tell you that my colleagues will absolutely screen you out if you have a mistake on your resume. Again, it's your opportunity to first sell yourself. So if you're presenting that, you know, with mistakes from the get go, that can, that can eliminate you. Definitely good advice there. Um, is there information you would recommend leaving off of a resume? Um, I think it just depends on where you are in your, um, career path. So, you know, for myself now, I've been in this education career for quite some time and prior, you know, a while ago, I would have had my experience on there um, from previous jobs during college or right out of college. Um, but as time goes on, you can take some of those pieces off because you really want to highlight um, the relevant work experience that you have related to what it is, whatever position you're pursuing. I would agree with that. Um, how about this? What are keywords and do you think that they should be used on a resume? Um, I think you, I think it depends on the position you're applying to. Um, so I think if, if you're looking or interested in a specific position, you might want to come to know what, um, qualities of the, um, 
organization is looking for. So maybe by reviewing the job description that's uh, often attached with postings, you can decipher from that what a person or an organization is looking for in a person that's applying um, and tailor some of the keywords that you include towards that job description. So that might mean that you're kind of tweaking your um, resume slightly kind of like in that in that section where you know you, um, what your objective is you might uh, tailor your objective to whatever position you're specifically applying to. Agreed with that um, and then this one kind of relates back to the common mistakes but would you recommend having a resume reviewed before applying for a job? Oh absolutely I don't think it hurts at all. Um, you know, a second set of eyes is always a good idea on any document that you're creating. Um, so I know that I participated with Brockport in a, um, a resume review, and I felt that I had good conversations with those that I um, interacted with and, you know, gave them some ideas and suggestions. And I told all of them, you know, this is not, app, you know, this is not, um, I don't have all the right answers. Um, and these are suggestions and you, sh you know, you can do what you want with them. Um, but I think, you know, sometimes hearing a person's ideas or hearing a different perspective of how to um, incorporate something on a resume can be helpful. Definitely. All right. And I would give a shameless plug just so everybody knows Career Services is still doing virtual appointments. We can check those resumes, cover letters, all that stuff for you. Um, you just make an appointment as usual on Handshake and we can help you out there. Um, now we can turn over to all of our great student questions. Before I read them off, I will offer to any of the students want to ask the question themselves rather than me reading it. Anybody? I'm not gonna, Lilia, go ahead. Just make sure you unmute your mic. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Lilia. Um, thank you for coming. Um, oh, you're um, I think everything that you've said has been just on the ball, which I'm not surprised but. Um, I think you. it's really good advice. Um, I was wondering if, um, so are there like, it's kind of like a two part question, I guess. If, are there any like certain experiences with previous work that you look for in applicants or experience that you think would be, you know, helpful to have like under your belt, especially for someone coming out of college? Mm -hmm. So I think it depends on the position you're applying to. So I, you know, as I mentioned, everybody's got to start somewhere. So when you're applying for a paraprofessional position, I am totally open to somebody that does not have any experience with children. Um, mm -hmm. The most important quality that you could bring is a willingness and a desire to want to work with children and to want to grow mm -hmm. um, and learn from the experiences that you're going to have. Um, as I mentioned, we have so many different ages of students and different abilities that they bring. Um, so you might have, you know, and if, especially if you're being, if you're going to work as a substitute, um, you're in different types of classrooms all the time. So you're getting different experiences with different types of students um, and you're learning and growing from that. So I think, you know, just the experience that you gain, um, and that desire to want to gain that experience, even if you're not coming with experience prior. Mm -hmm. But you look for people who are going to face it, face the challenge and, you know, embrace it. Yep. And I mean, the, the, that's in what's most important, embracing it and knowing that you might not come in with all the answers, mm -hmm. um, but working, you're never alone in a position with us. And we, we have great teams um, within all of our different types of positions um, that support one another. So taking advantage and knowing that is helpful when you're going into a position because you may not feel fully confident and you may not have all of the answers. Mm. Um, but having the willingness to interact and ask questions of your colleagues and the supervisor that you're working with um, so that you can work with the students in the best way possible to support their needs and mm. learn and grow from the knowledge that they um, impart on you. Great, thank you. You're welcome. All right, great question, Lilia. Um, Taylor asked the question, what is the best way to make your resume stand out? Um, I th you know, I think put it, including um, looking at that job description for whatever position it is you're applying to and making sure 
um, that the experience that you have that relates to that job is highlighted on your resume. And again, if, if you don't have that specific experience going in, working, you know, under that objective. Um, and also like with, with our application process, there is, um, as a part of the application at the end of it, there's a paragraph which says, please explain to us why you're applying to this position. So if you're not capturing it directly on your resume, capturing it in that paragraph, that gives you an opportunity to give us a little bit of narrative as to why you're applying. So be open and honest. That's, that's an important thing that we're gonna look for. We want individuals to be honest with us as you know, um, we're looking for that quality in, a, in an um, employee as well. So say, I don't have um, specific work experience related to working with children with disabilities. However, I'm a fast learner, I'm willing to grow, the, and there's an opportunity for you to kind of highlight some of the skills and qualities you could bring. All right, and then we had some really great questions from our student Khadija. Um, the first one was, how about applicants who are bilingual? Do they have better chances at getting hired? Um, so we, I mean, any, you know, we're an organization like any other that looks for diverse candidates. Um, so that's always a, a nice benefit, um, and, but we give all of our applicants an equal opportunity. All right. And she also asked, how long should your resume be? So it, I, this is a, maybe a personal opinion, but I don't think that it's horrible if it goes on to a second page, but reading a four or five page resume can be a little daunting. So that's kind of why I go back to, you know, the more work experiences that you have, um, you may want to consider taking some of those um, experiences that have been, you know, further in the past off to kind of uh, decrease the length of the resume. Definitely. All right. So that is the end of the questions that we have currently asked. Does anybody else have any other questions here? Make sure you unmute your microphone if you want to ask a question because otherwise we won't hear you. I'm not going to force anyone though. All right, it looks like nobody has any questions. If anyone does come up with any questions, you can send them on to us and we can pass them along to Shannon. As I said before, sure. we are still taking appointments. So if you need any help with resumes or any of that fun stuff, just let us know and reach out. Um, Shannon, do you have anything else you wanna say before we sign off here? Um, so I would just like to add that obviously we're in this kind of unprecedented time. Um, and so none of us are working um, currently in school districts. Um, please know though that I am still interviewing and I'm still working through um, those that are applying to our positions and we're holding Zoom interviews. Um, we've been doing that for a few weeks now and it's been very successful. Um, I am not able to move as quickly on um, positions and offers and that sort of thing given the time that we're in, but I certainly do welcome you to consider um, positions with us. And I'm not sure, Sarah, if you can share with them my um, email address, but if, you know, please do reach out to me if you guys have any questions about positions. Um, I don't, don't yet know when we're gonna be returning, um, but it, it doesn't mean, you know, please don't feel like you have to wait to apply until you hear that schools are back in session. Um, the other thing that I am recruiting for currently is our summer school program. So it's, um, referred to as the extended school year program. It's a six week program um, that we run in the summer. It's a full day program, five days per week. Um, the dates for this summer are July 6th through August 14th. And we'll have two orientation days on July 1st and 2nd. At this time, we are moving forward and planning for that program um, as it's going to happen. Um, if, you know, if further information comes, obviously, you know, that information will be shared with those that have applied and or interviewed. Um, but if you haven't had a specific special ed experience and are looking for one, just to kind of learn more about um, the world of special education and to see if it could be um, an interest of yours for, you know, your career, um, I would re highly recommend you taking this opportunity to gain the experience. It's a short time frame, six weeks in length. Um, so it's not too much of a commitment on your part and you know, you get that opportunity to gain um, special education experience to see what it's all about. And, um, you know, it's also a good way for you to learn about yourself too and, and what you're looking for in your profession. You may find that you're not interested in special education and it, it's better to know those things earlier on than later. Um, so you can really gain, 
end up where you want to be ultimately in your career. Well, great. Thank you so much, Shannon. We will definitely, I will send out a follow-up email with everybody with your email and the links to all your positions that are posted on Handshake. Um, hopefully you'll get some good applications out of this and make sure, like we've said, get your resume checked before you apply. Um, but yes, thank you so much, Shannon, for taking the time to do this and being part of our first snack and chat. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course, if everyone wants to message our um, Instagram, tell us what snack you had during our chat today. We can share that on our social media. Um, but yeah, thank you again, and I hope everyone has a good day. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Shannon. You're very welcome. Thank you, guys.